Charting Toward Intimacy covers mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Charting Toward Intimacy covers mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, where we're expanding the conversation around Catholic sexuality. We're your hosts, Ellen and Kathleen. All right. Welcome back to Charting Toward Intimacy. We we're back. Have been on a break for a little yeah. while. Um, we, I think, the last recording that Kathleen and I did was like the first week of December or something. Um, yeah. And now we're in mid January. So, um, but this episode's not coming out until like end of January. So, <laughs> I'm not so going to turn it back. around like in two days. <laughs> That's right. We are post holidays, and you know, back to the normal. Yeah, trying to get back into routines, kids back in school, and Impossible. I mean, my kids aren't in school, but <laughs> mine are. Oh, I, my I have little ones. Um, but yeah, we are excited to be back and recording. And um, if you are a longtime listener of the podcast, you might have noticed that the intro was just ever so slightly different. And I just what? like before we jump into this topic, I just want to like comment on that a little bit. So first of all, you may have noticed that. I'm not the only host. Ellen here is not the only host. Kathleen is officially my co-host. I'm so excited to kind of have changed the format of the podcast to this because, first of all, Kathleen is so fun to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the day you're talking, really. But, <laughs> but just, um, you know, she and I are, we're both instructors in different methods. We've got a lot of background in fertility science. And so um, we can bring you guys a lot of like information on that end. Um, and then we both have um, just different backgrounds in um, different aspects of theology and church life and living NFP. And so um, we can really bring, I, I think, us together um, makes a really nice conversation and a really nice bolster of, of information. Um, and I'll say too that um, we're both just like also on the journey, like right along with all of you too. You we know, have not like, arrived. <laughs> we have not arrived, and we don't plan to arrive anytime soon. No. Right. So, um, and I think that's what I love so much about doing this with you, Ellen, is that even when we're not like recording, right? Like we're still we're like marco poloing each other right. like throughout the we day are... with like what do you think of this like do you think you know all like questions and just to have that person that you can actually go to like it's not you don't always have somebody that you can go and talk to about i mean sexuality or nfp or discernment general, same or yeah right who shares the same perspective as you and I love having that with you. And then I love also being able to like invite all of you listeners into that as well with us. Right. It's just like a really special space to kind of be in. Yeah. I highly recommend like, because I've since starting the podcast. Um, and if, if you've been listening for a while, you've heard me say this before, like don't put yourself on an NFP Island, like find someone to talk NFP with. And um, when I started the podcast, I had like, or I still have <laughs> like local friends that we could chat about those things. Um, but not to the level that mm -hmm. I can chat with Kathleen about them. And I think it's because we're, we are like out of each other's lives. Like we're right. on opposite sides of the country. Um, we're not necessarily like friends with each other's families. Like not that we wouldn't be. <laughs> right. <laughs> But it's like right, yeah. we're we're able to talk about things on on a much like deeper level. Um, I think because like we're only friends with each other and we're not, you know, like I'm not seeing right. her uh extended family or like her husband and she's not seeing mine. And so like um we're able to like talk about difficulties with sexuality or discernment or things like that that like wouldn't necessarily be appropriate for mm -hmm. a friend that's like in your life right yeah yeah um, no it's really true it's so it's an interesting um it's like an interesting dynamic but one that's like really really good yeah it's been really good for me anyway. yeah so anyway i highly recommend um finding someone across the country just go on instagram and find a friend okay That's, just find a friend it's really not that hard <laughs> uh, 
Oh man. But um but yeah. Well, I mean, one great piece of advice if you're like looking for that type of friend is is just bring it to God. Like say, yeah. Lord, I'm mm-hmm. I'm looking for someone that I can share this journey with because it's a struggle and I want to have someone that I can talk to and just be able to just send them a Marco Polo about something that is difficult with sexuality without any intro. <laughs> yeah. It's like the 21st century equivalent of like a pen pal. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. You just, uh, yeah. Texting I Marco know. Polo. I mean, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's great. That's what we do. Um, so anyway, so, so there's Kathleen and, um, a little bit of our friendship. Um, okay. and then you might've also noticed that, um, instead of saying where we are expanding the conversation around natural family planning, um, we are now expanding the conversation around Catholic sexuality. Mm -hmm. Um, something that we recognized was, um, one, looking back at 2022's podcast episodes, the top five most popular podcast episodes were about sex, not necessarily NFP. Um, and we recognized that there was a void in the conversation. Um, there's, and, and this isn't that we are going to stop talking about NFP. That is absolutely still a part of this conversation. And there will still be episodes that are like focused on NFP. And, and what we're going to talk about today is definitely going to be like more focused on NFP, but we are also, going to expand that conversation out a little bit into um, things like libido, desire, um, sexuality, um, just your your marriage and your relationship and intimacy in that. Things um, just a little bit like zoomed out from NFP yeah. because, mm-hmm. and I think what we're going to get into a little bit today with this topic is NFP is not just this um, single rule that you just need to follow. If you're right. really going to be practicing NFP, it needs to be integrated into a full understanding of the reason for the gender difference and Catholic sexuality as a whole and like yeah. Catholic moral moral theology around like sexuality. Yeah, it's really it's just one piece of Catholic sexuality. Really. Yeah, um, it's not it, it's not its own you know thing necessarily. It's right. It does. You're exactly right. It requires an entire understanding. Um, yeah, of Catholic sexuality as a whole. And I think um, when we when we get into a spot where we're just really griping about NFP, it's not NFP that's the problem. It's not, it's, it's a lack of an understanding of this whole picture of the whole picture of Catholic sexuality. Um, so I I think we sort of like beat around the bush on like the specific topic of this episode, but what what we're talking about is why do you use NFP? Mm -hmm. Is your heart in it or are you just kind of checking a box to follow the rules before uh, before we yeah. like jump sorry i'm like totally no, no, monopolizing no. this conversation do it do it do <laughs> it before we jump too roll. far i just want to say that everything we're going to talk about is not to scold you for quote you know practicing nfp wrong that is absolutely not the point of this discussion um what we want to do is pull on your heartstrings a little bit and reflect on what your relationship is with natural family planning um, and try to recognize like, where can I go deeper? Where can I learn more? Where can I lean on God more in this relationship? And then the other thing that I want to say is that there is a beautiful faith to simply following a rule, even if you don't understand it. Mm -hmm. There absolutely is beautiful faith in that. And so if you're listening to this going, that's, I am just checking a box that it, I'm just checking the box of NFP and it's, it's frustrates me or whatever that there is beautiful faith in that because you recognize 
the the truth like you recognize that there is truth to this rule and yeah. that you should follow it and that um like that that's a good thing to follow the yeah. rule right and that is that is okay if that's where you're at in your journey right now um and we want to call you to maybe take a baby step further yeah. from that there's a there's a real humility to that it's, yes. a, it's a total absence of pride saying, oh no, this doesn't make any sense. And I know better. It's no, I trust in the church. And even though I can't quite understand this, I'm going to continue to trust in the church. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is just like you said, there's a beautiful faith in that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so please don't, um, walk away from this episode going, oh my gosh, I'm a terrible Catholic. Because no, you're an awesome Catholic. <laughs> you're a great Catholic because <laughs> you're probably better than those of us that understand it. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, uh, because the goal is striving. You are striving to, um, you're, you're, you're striving to follow God's call and, um, that's one of the beauties of our Catholic faith, faith is that we have the magisterium who has set out very clear um, rules on certain things. And we can, you know, it, it's absolutely appropriate to just follow those rules, even if we don't understand them. Um, but it's also important and appropriate to mm-hmm. learn the why and get connected with with why (laughs) yeah and I guess let me ask the question um if we are like what could be the first step if you are checking a box Mm. what is the first step to understanding um and I think you know I kind of think there are times I mean I I do understand I understand, um, for the most part, I think, you know, on most days I'll say, I understand the why behind why I practice NFP and I believe in it and I love it, which is why I became an instructor, you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, but, and I know we've talked about, this isn't like a secret. I know we've talked about this in other podcast episodes. My husband feels very differently. Yeah. And um, hopefully we're going to get him on to an episode oh, to guys stay to, tuned. to share his uh, thoughts and opinions they're valid yeah. they are valid yeah. thoughts and opinions they're even if he hates nfp <laughs> they're very strong they're strong and they're valid yeah <laughs> but, but so you know he's very much a person who's checking the box and right. i think we started our marriage with both of us just checking the box right like this is what we need to do this is what we're going to do um and he's he continues to check a box but again in a way that is just like because I know his struggle with it. It is so beautiful to see that he, he won't back down from it, yeah. even though he really dislikes it. <laughs> that, <laughs> and there is dislikes it, right? beautiful, beautiful it faith is. in that. It is. So I don't know if this would necessarily be like the first step. Um, yeah. I think everybody's first step is going to look a little bit different, but um, maybe we should talk about like, a little bit why the church calls us to use NFP. Mm -hmm. And first off, the church doesn't actually call us to use NFP. That's true. That's a fact. (laughs) We say that a lot, but um, Mm -hmm. this is not a call of married couples to use NFP. No, it's not. It's an option. It is a valid option. option. It is a valid option. Um, And so if we flip the narrative a little bit because I think so here's the narrative that I see a lot I hate NFP because it doesn't allow me to have sex with my spouse when I want well the other option if you are trying to avoid pregnancy is complete and total abstinence Mm -hmm. so I think that might even be the first step for a lot of people is Whenever you hear your mind saying that, just flipping it in your head to, I appreciate that NFP does allow me to have sex with my spouse at least some of the time Mm -hmm. when we're trying to avoid pregnancy. Because um, it's not a question of 
using NFP or using contraception. That's not a choice. Right. Because contraception is not a choice. It's not an option. Mm -hmm. And we'll definitely have some episodes where we get more into contraception and why that's just absolutely not an option. Um, but I don't think we want to like dive into that too much here. Um, we can just kind of like recognize that's a true statement. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead? Um, I totally just lost my train of thought. That's okay. I like, I like how to, I know it looked like you had a thought. That's why I was like, go ahead. (laughs) And then it was gone. Um, well, I can keep chatting. You can just interrupt me when yeah, your thought comes going. back. Yeah, I'll interrupt you when it comes back. <laughs> but, um, but I think a lot of times just the things that we say in our head really, um, they change our opinion of things. And so if we just take that simple step to flip that script mm-hmm. in just recognizing like, look, I have this option of NFP and the beauty that NFP does is it actually um, shows me you know, when myself or my wife, depending on who you are in this relationship, <laughs> yeah. um, shows when the woman is fertile and, um, and since we're trying to avoid pregnancy, we can with confidence come together during, uh, times of the cycle when we can be sure that she is not fertile. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and that like, like what a gift, what a gift that NFP is that God thinks sex is so important that even when you recognize that you should avoid pregnancy, he gives us a tool to still come together with our spouse. Yeah, That's, that's how so important true. he recognizes sex is. Mm-hmm. That's a really good point. You know, it is just like you say, it's a flipping the script. Mm-hmm. You, you know, do you see the glasses half empty or half full? Right. right. It's, it's the exact same concept that Yeah. It's because, I mean, think back how many, you know, like a hundred years ago, right? Like we didn't have this science. We didn't have this, um, you know, this ability. It was was coming up on a hundred years ago. We started to have the rhythm method, but that's we're getting close. We're getting close to having to say things like 150 years ago. (laughs) 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 Woohoo! But yeah, you know, it was either if you like absolutely could not get pregnant or did not want to get pregnant, like you just really didn't have the option. Right. Right. I mean, um, and I think there are, there are still people today who kind of feel that way. (laughs) It's like, yeah, right. Unfortunately, you know what I mean? But I feel bad for them. (laughs) It's just kind of like, I have, if, if I ever want to have sex with my spouse again, I just need to have contraception because I can't get pregnant or. Yeah. You know, for whatever reason, or I, I don't ever want to be pregnant again. You know, it's like, we just have to be on contraception. So that mentality is definitely still out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but you're, that's, that's such a cool way to think of it that like God has given us this tool so that we can still come together, that we can still, I mean, celebrate the sacrament that right. we, you know, that we live every day. Um, renew our vows as we say right right that's what that's what sex is renewing your wedding vows every single time um that's a really cool way to actually to think about it and i'll say you know whenever i have something that i don't understand and like i said i i understand um you know the the whole nfp thing from a from a church perspective on most days and the reason i say on most days is (laughs) when because when you know my husband and I are kind of like feeling disconnected on our, our, you know, understanding of it, or it's causing some friction, um, in our relationship. Those are the days where I'm like, Lord, why I, I like, I really don't get it. Why, you know? Um, and then I always just have to like cycle back and just be like, you know, this, like, you know, get those little pieces of your brain back. But, um, but whenever I'm in those spots, um, with anything, not just with NFP, Um, I always go to either church documents or, um, voices in the church that I really trust. Um, there are some authors and everything that, you know, that I've really come to, to trust, um, their opinions and their, um, their feelings and their thoughts on things. Um, so doing your research really, Mm -hmm. and trying to understand. And I think that's something that is so in, in our culture today, um, 
I feel like there's sort of this, this like epidemic of wanting to make, to remain ignorant sometimes Mm -hmm. wanting to like have our cake and eat it too, and not wanting to be told that we're wrong. And so refusing to actually look into it. And I think this is especially prominent around matters of faith. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think, I think this is especially prominent amount around matters of sexuality and matters of sexuality. Exactly. You know, it's like, no, no, but if I, if I look into this and there's something that, you know, makes sense, then that means I need to change the way that I live Mm -hmm. and I don't want to have to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to refuse to look into it, you know, but, but if you are a person, thankfully, this isn't the problem for you. If you are a person who's kind of checking off the box, you know, you are living the way, the way you're being called to live how much better if you could actually understand it. Right. Right. Um, You know, so really, um, and I would say, Ellen, what are some of those, those resources that you would really go to? Yeah. um, So I would recommend starting with the catechism and going Mm -hmm. ahead and (laughs) raise your hand if you're reading the catechism in a year. (laughs) Um, I would go ahead and um, if you're reading Catechism of the Year, you heard Father Mike say, this is a book, not a resource um, encyclopedia, but go ahead and use it like an encyclopedia <laughs> um, cause, because we're not going to get to this section for quite a few months. <laughs> well, not a while, yeah. Um, go ahead and look up marriage, sex, um, you know, go ahead and look up things like chastity um, and read through those sections. And um, and what I'd recommend is don't just read the paragraph that's referenced, like read the section that that mm-hmm. reference paragraph is under, um, because again, it is a book. Um, right. It just happens to have all of those lovely reference numbers yeah. um, and, you know, get, get the background. Um, the next things that I would recommend um, would be Humana Vitae or Casti Canubi. Um, those mm-hmm. are both papal documents. Um, Humana Vitae is short. Casti Canubi is longer. Humana Vitae is newer. Casti Canubi is older and has a little bit more difficult language. Um, so you can just kind of where you're at. Um, but I think Casti Canubi talks a little bit more about the why, um, Humana Vitae is more just like the, this is the, you know, NFP is the option, (laughs) natural means of fertility regulation, um, is, is the option. Um, but you can still get some great stuff out of it. Um, then I'd recommend um, a couple of Christopher West books. Um, Theology of the Body for Beginners uh, mm-hmm. would be a great place to start. Good News About Sex and Marriage, also a really good one. Um, that one is in a Q&A format. And so you can just kind of like look at the questions and maybe right. just like go straight to some of the ones that apply to the questions that you have. Um yeah. The only thing about the good news about sex and marriage is I, I don't think he goes enough into that why of NFP um, in those questions. I don't I, I think he's more talking about a lot of other aspects of sexuality. Um, right. So I, I'm not sure that that's going to like you're not going to like read that book and go, oh, I have my why behind NFP. Now, you might have your why behind some other great stuff, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think oh. Holy Sex by Gregory Popcat oh, um, has a good section on NFP. Mm-hmm. Um, that one's real. Yeah, that one's really good. And then there's another book uh, by Christopher West called Heaven's Song. This is going to give you, I really recommend this book. Now you need to be ready to mm-hmm. receive this book. This book is things you don't hear in the church Mm -hmm. about sexuality. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, but, and, and the book might make you blush. Like (laughs) it's about the song of songs. Um, it goes deep into the song of songs and the relationship that it has with liturgy and our, our church as a whole and our personhood and our relationship of God to man. Um, that book, will give you your why behind NFP. But I'd really recommend Theology of the Body for Beginners before you read Heaven's Song um, Mm -hmm. because Heaven's Song is, um, it's talking a lot about JP2's Theology of the Body, specifically the addresses that 
JP2 did not publicly give. Um, so a little Ooh. fun fact, there's a couple of addresses yeah. on the Song of Songs that John Paul II recognized um, it was kind of it, – it was too much for a wide, broad audience to, you know, just – say some of the like just a little too tender of information yeah. not that not that we as catholics shouldn't know it it was just it was like a little just a little too much for a broad audience um and yeah. so that's what heaven song really goes into some of those addresses that um that weren't given and so it's i think it would be really good to have kind of a little base of theology of the body before you jump into heaven song yeah yeah and i think you and i think i have not read heaven song yet but we were talking about it not that long ago. Um, and so correct me if I'm wrong, but it really kind of explains the, um, does it not explain like how, how sex is really a reflection of, of like the love of God for mm-hmm. us. Right. And, the, mm-hmm. and, you know, Trinitarian love and, and all of that kind of stuff. It does which, go into that kind of stuff in that book. Which I think is such an important thing that we need to remember. Um, you know, at the end of the day, like we, we see like our, when we practice NFP, we're looking at it like under a microscope, right. You know, like we see it very close up the nitty gritty, every little detail. And it's hard to understand the big picture of it all. And so, you know, to really get to that point, we need to back up and we need to remember that like, okay, sex in and of itself is a reflection of God's love for man and, and, and trinitarian mm-hmm. love and all of these things and and man's openness to god yeah, exactly and so being able to really bring that to prayer if we're if we're checking off the box and really struggling to understand this teaching to bring that to prayer and say lord i know that this is a revelation of you mm-hmm. just show me how mm-hmm. you know um yeah i don't know it's um and it is, it's sex, but it's also like, you know, we talked about it before. Do we have to practice NFP? No, we don't have to practice NFP. You can, by all means, go ahead and just, you know, just never love your spouse, never charge your spouse. And See what happens. Feel called and, 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 you know, and just accept, you know, the, whatever comes from that, you know, um, that's just be beautiful- careful in that mindset to not turn it into a test to God, because that's where it's really easy in that mindset to just say, Oh, like God's just going to take care of me. And so I do not need to practice self-control with my spouse and we can just, um, come together whenever we want in a more lustful way, perhaps. Um, we, we are not called to just test God like that. Um, yes. And that's the other point I was going to make is like, Oh, sorry. I cut you remember. off. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. Um, it's just always remembering that call to responsible parenthood too. Mm-hmm. Um, which I know we've talked about in previous episodes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Episode and that comes from Humana Vitae, <laughs> but, um, the yes. responsible parenthood. And I really recommend, um, checking out really the definition of responsible parenthood, because I think I'm just totally going to throw a wrench in this. Maybe this is a future podcast episode. I think that we could replace natural family planning with responsible parenthood with that phrase. Yeah. And that it would actually be a much more accurate reflection of what we are, what, what everyone is called to Yes, and how yeah. when you're practicing responsible parenthood, you can utilize fertility awareness um, yes. and discernment to, um, you know, to, to practice responsible parenthood, but because that's um, the thing. To, that would to be really, a really good podcast episode, actually. That would be a really good episode because <laughs> prayer, prayer and discernment are a they are the crucial element to NFP, right? Like right. It's fertility awareness paired with with constant ongoing prayer and discernment for yes. family life. Yes. Um, 
So yeah, that's a really good point. Oof, I think we need to start writing some things out and, you know. Yeah, I'm going to put that I'm going to put that on our <laughs> list of podcast ideas right now after we finish yeah, recording. Yeah, right now and um let's talk about what we can do to start changing uh changing some vernacular, yeah. you know. Loving it. <laughs> Loving it. Thanks so much for listening. If you are not already following us on Instagram, be sure to check us out at Charting Toward Intimacy. And if you listen to podcasts on a platform that gives you the option to rate or review, we'd love for you to do that because it helps us spread the word about the podcast. If you ever have questions, comments, or episode topic ideas, please reach out to us. We love to hear from you. You can reach out on Instagram or send us an email. Our email is in the show notes. Until next time. Bye.